<clears throat> Happy Monday, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Good times from your boy, Jake Merrickham. I'll just finish up the live stream on Shark Coast Tactical. Will gave away another Microtech. Not to me, but that's all right. One of these days, I'm going to snag one of them sons of bitches. I just want a Microtech. But his rant, he always says, like, he goes over the store, here's what we have, here's what's going on, we, you know. And then he always does a rant, you know. It wasn't really a rant. It was, uh, today was actually, you know, refreshing. He talked about uh, family lost somebody. And he talks about how your time is limited on this planet. And life goes by so fast, so damn fast. Um. Uh, you know, I'm 47. But when I, when you're a kid, summer seemed to feel like a lifetime. Every time I fly up to Maine from Miami or Fort Lauderdale, and Mom would hand me that plane ticket, and I'd go up to Maine and do my thing with my cousins, and you know, do our chores, and but it, no, we didn't have a lot of money. Every day we'd wake up, and my aunt and uncle owned uh, a duplex down on the beach that they bought back in the in. I think they bought it when Jason was born. And he's three years older than me. I'm 74. He's 71. So they bought it in 1971. I don't know what they paid. It's a nice. It was a nice duplex right on the beach. One house behind uh, from the sand, basically. And that's we spent our summers, you know. So that was their income property. They lived in Toronto. They... Uh, we had the shack. The shack was originally bought by my grandmother and Auntie Edna, and then he, she sold it to Uncle Greg. It was a it was a, a piece of crap, two story main dwelling, uh, very very poor, you know. And over time, he fixed it up. He had the thing raised, and then he did all, all the electrical himself, probably better than most electricians, because Uncle Greg knows his shit. Uh, you know, in every summer. One summer we went like a month with no electricity. <clears throat> I don't think it was about financial. It was about the wiring had to be down or something. But it could have been about money. Uh, and I remember every morning we'd wake up when we had electricity. And we're kids. And uh, Auntie Judy would make us scrambled eggs and shit. Really good scrambled eggs, actually. Or cereal, you know, and we'd watch Days of Our Lives. And after Days of Our Lives, we'd pack up our beach stuff. And this is, uh, we walked down Union. Union was like a street that was almost vertical. I mean, the fucking thing was like this. Down to the beach. Um, and we'd walk down to the beach, and we'd have, you have our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and we'd go swim in the Atlantic Ocean uh, on the main coast. We'd go diving for crabs in the rocks, and... You know, that was our summers. And then uh, during the week, we had our chores, things we had to do. When the chores were over, my cousin and I would go get in trouble and go get in fights with the local kids, getting our asses kicked and playing Galaga and Kung Fu Master down at the arcade downtown. It was good times. You know, summers seemed like they lasted forever. You know, and then you start to get a bit older and you're an adult and you're, you know, you're... You, you have a career or a job, and, and then life becomes a series of paychecks, you know, and you blink, and you're 21, 25, 30, 32, 34, a few dysfunctional relationships with crazy bitches along the way, and boom, you're 40, you're 42, you're 45, and, you know, life goes fast, it just goes so fast, the older you get, the faster it goes, you know, I remember when the summer used to was a lifetime, now a season is a series of paychecks and or experiences or a combination of all that. And it just makes you think. You know, Nobody knows how long they've got on this planet. Nobody, uh, tom tomorrow's never guaranteed. Uh, that's why I've taken the bull by the horns with this gun stuff. But I haven't gone all the way. I've been lazy about the training aspect. Uh, I'm a bit, a bit scared to look like an idiot, uh, you know. I'm not fud old, you know, but you know I'm, a, I'm that older dude that got into it later in life, and and I'm fat, and I'm this, and I'm that, and I'm not coordinated, and my vision is isn't great. So every time I think about 
really going forward with a training class, you know, I back up because, you know, it's like when you're a kid and you're being asked to stand in front of the class and you're all embarrassed and, you, you know, I don't want to be that guy. But, you know, the other night, last night, I was thinking, you know what, you're a bit old for this shit. Now, I know classes cost money. Everything costs money. I got to buy ammo. I got to buy this. But a part of the, my reluctance is because I just don't feel like I'm ready. You know, I don't feel like I'm, I'm ready for a class. I don't want to be the bumbling idiot around dudes that know their stuff and be the one that drags everybody down and, and behind because they got to focus on me and the guy can't even zero his shit. Why is he even here? You know, that kind of shit. I don't want to be that guy. That's why I keep telling myself, well, I'll wait. You know, I'll build a skill set and blah, 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 blah. But life's never guaranteed. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed, you know. So I'm going to go forward and uh, try to just find some way to take a basic class however I can. Right now, ammo is on my mind. He talked about how well, the war in Europe, I can't believe I'm saying that in 2022. It feels like it's 1944. The war in Europe is causing all the European militaries to divert a lot of the ammo manufacturers are reallocating... Here we go. See? We'll talk about war. Everything goes to hell. They're allocating their ammo store. So he said, you know what? It's not going to happen overnight, but, you know, ammo's bottomed out, and it's going to head back up. You know? You, you snag a case of ball ammo 9 mil that goes for 350 400 now. It's going to be like a year and a half ago when it was almost 1000 bucks a case. But every time that the prices are bottomed out, my dumbass is buying stupid, goofy guns instead of saying focus on the ammunition. I'm gonna play this game, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I can make happen to get the ammo in, in check. Best I can do, unless I start selling stuff. I can sell a gun or two, and those turntables I might sell those. And I might, you know, part of my logic too is when I have a little cash in my hand, is I think about it like you know I could I could buy a thousand rounds of ammo, two thousand rounds of ammo, or I could buy a cool new gun. Once they shoot the ammo, the ammo's gone. But the gun, that shit's forever. You know, like tangibility. But you can't learn if you don't train. And to train, you need bullets. And bullets cost cash. And, oh, man, I'll tell you. Life would be a lot easier if I won the Powerball or even a scratch off. You know, five, ten grand, twenty grand, something. God damn it. I'm not complaining. My life's pretty good. I got a pimp ass truck, a nice little property. Uh,. I'm still sending resumes trying to get a new support job. They don't want me in their office. Take one look at me. You know, on the phone, I sound great. Hi, this is Jake. Thank you for calling XYZ Company. How can I help you today? Oh, sure. Yeah, we can analyze the issue and find what's causing it and solve it as quickly as possible. Thank you for calling. You have a great day. Now, you try that in person. Hi, I'm Dick Merrick. <laughs> it's all he see, man. Who's the fucking ogre and how was it, how was he employed here? <laughs> I scare the office pool. I'm just saying. So I'm trying to figure out some. I don't know, that was a tangent, right? I'm having a few Monday beers. I didn't drink all weekend. I left the beer in the fridge and I was like, "Come on." One of the big things about uh, Will Mead's uh, Charcoal Tactical live streams, and he's like, whenever he curses, he he screams, "Drink!" He's like, if you're taking shots, if you're drinking a beer, have a sip every time I curse. And the guy fucking curses more than I do. Like a fucking Canadian sailor on leave who just stepped on a pile of tacks and Legos. Like, fuck shit, fuck, fuck, fuck. So I'm like, drink, drink, drink. <laughs> Good times, man. All American. Fuck Biden. Good times. All right. Cream puff. I guess what I'm trying to say is don't take life for granted. Live every day to its fullest. Seek those dreams and put forth the effort to make them a reality. If you always wanted a Harley, which I have all my life, and every time I do, I read, we just had three bikers got creamed. It's bike week here in, Florida, in, in, in Central Florida, down in Daytona. Some asshole, not looking where he's going on it, or her, she's going on her cell phone. Poor ass bikers, just... Doing what they're supposed to do. They're not hot rodding. We're talking Harley dudes, you know? I mean, some of those sport bike dudes can get a little crazy. But even then, they're living life to the fullest, you know? And if they die doing what they love, that's not tragic. It's poetic in a way, to die doing what you love. 
You could die sitting at your desk at some bullshit job in a, in a goddamn, like, all the years I spent in those cubicles, you know? Hell, you're going to die doing what you love. At least there's some some poetic justice to that. But at the same time, you got to be, you know, logical about it. Every time I've thought about over the last 20 years buying a bike, I'd save up a little money to buy a, a used bike, a cruiser. You know, and then there's eight stories about bikers getting creamed, so I back off. I get, you know, like, fuck it, I want to buy a big ass truck. I can get hit by a goddamn train, and there's a small percentage of a chance I might still survive. On a bike, some bitch in a Prius could fucking look down at her Instagram for two seconds, and you're a dead man. You know, so you, you, you have to weigh the pros and cons. But ultimately, the theme is to live your life, to follow your dreams. And when you fall down, pick yourself back up and keep going. And when you get scared or you don't want to, you're embarrassed. You know, I'm Jake America. I've been dragged from here to Timbuktu by just about every gun guy on the internet. And uh, I'm still here. I'm still moving forward. Travis annihilates me every chance he gets. He's, he's been cool lately. What's up, Travis? How you doing, buddy? But, you know, Travis isn't wrong. You know, I get angry and all my hurt, hurt feelings, but... It's like, dude, what are you doing? You get out and shoot. Train. Noah says the same thing. Because you have to train. Somebody shared a, an article today where uh, a person over in, uh, in, the, in the Ukraine, who was a, a journalist, that said, I, I wish to God I had trained with a weapon before this happened. Because now they're forced to grab a gun, stand at post, and go fight the Russians. You know? And then I look at our country and all this anti-gun rhetoric and politicians that are trying to take our rights away. It's like, are you watching what's going on? Now do you get it? Why we believe in our rights to defend ourselves and own firearms? You know? Because shit like that can happen overnight. A few weeks ago, World War III wasn't even a thing. It was a punchline. Now we're at the precipice of possible World War III. And that's not even being exaggerating or anything. That's that's a real possibility. There could be a draft again, a worldwide war. Although, if Putin goes cuckoo for chew and he's cocoa, he's cuckoo for cocoa puffs, he might just push the red button and then we're all fucked anyway. But the point is, live your life, follow those dreams. You've been holding off, trying to be frugal because you didn't get that car or that bike or that gun you always wanted. And the wife's nagging you, or the boyfriend or husband is nagging you. Because it's all about being responsible and preparing for retirement. What, happen, what happens if retirement never comes? You know? Tomorrow's never guaranteed. You just check the news on a daily basis and you see how much crazy fucking shit goes down. I don't know where. I guess the moral of that story is uh, I need to be more about my actions than my words and do what I'm saying. You know, I, I, I'm not going to try, I'm going to do. It's like Yoda or Mr. Miyagi. Walk on right side safe, walk on left side safe. Try is in the middle. I'll try to do something. Okay, squish that grape. You either do it or you don't. And sometimes you just got to man up. Remember you got a set of balls, even if you're a chick. Hey, Chris Jenner. Or what's his name? Her, her, it, I, I, I forget the pronouns. Dump truck. Ice cream cone. I don't know. Armadillo. 72. Hut, hut, hut. <laughs> ah, hell, I'm talking out of my ass again. But you know what I'm saying, right? So get out there, be fearless, and be true. Be, be decent, and be kind, and be honest. But don't back down from anybody. Follow your dreams. Be passionate about who you are and what you want to accomplish. And you may not get there. God knows I've been trying to do that. It's trying. See? Squish like grape the last year and a half with this gun stuff. Uh, but I'll tell you, I've never felt more alive in several years doing it. And yeah, I tinker and I post videos of me adding a fucking grip in a stupid part. But you know what? I enjoy every damn second of it. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Ooh, what are we going to mess with next? If I, it, it makes me happy. I enjoy it. And there's a lot of people out there, they enjoy it too. So, I hear you. The motivators. All those out there unhappy with life. Stalemates. Relationships. Jobs they hate. 
Find something better. Find something that sets the fire inside a flame. Because tomorrow's never guaranteed. Life is short. Make it sweet. On that note, that's about it. Your pal, Jake America.